Because what if somebody actually knew what we really are? There is not de-aging, right? So it's not my face, and then they smoothed out my face to make it look younger. It's a 100% digital human in the same way that the tiger in the life of Pi Greatest producer of movies. And he's here, he produced Gemini Man. He's what? Jerry Bruckheimer. Anyway, please welcome Will Smith. Now we know the kid is up. Please, come, please bring out Will's co star, Clyde Owen. Supervisor Bill Westenhofer. Certainly not, please. Please welcome Wedding Visual Effects Supervisor Guy Williams. screenplay, the story, has been going on for, for a very, very long time. Um, when did you come on? What made you fall in love with the story? And what was sort of the, the story at that time, and how did it evolve to what we now have now seen? Well, it's been at least 10 years that we've been working on this, and the, the issue was that technology hadn't caught up with the creativity of the writer. So we had to wait for these gentlemen over here in Ang Lee to figure out how to get this movie made. We did some unsuccessful versions of this and testing, and it looked pretty awful. So we kind of put it on the shelf until Ang said, we, I have a whole new way of doing this. And he said, I'm going to create something really special. And he certainly did. Okay, and what were the first conversations that you had? Like, what made you? Like sort of see, you know, Ang Lee is the guy to direct this movie. And Ang, what made you say, I am the guy to direct this movie? Uh, of course I'm the guy. No, that's the, that's Ang's inner gangster rapper. That's, the, that's what I've learned in spending time. Like he has an inner gangster rapper that every once in a while just comes out. <laughs> Well, uh, it, it's just too attractive, so that makes me like, yes. Uh, each time I make a movie, I have that feeling. I, I am the guy. There's nobody else. It's my movie. You, know, it, you make that connection, the visceral connection. I do feel this one. Actually, the first person to talk to me was uh, David Ellison uh, in his office at, 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 at Skydance. I saw that I hear a clone, a younger version. It's, I just feel I'm old enough to deal with this stuff. <laughs> like looking back, uh, what am I? When you see a clone, <laughs> which is a piece of jeans, what do we say? All this uh, philosophical stuff hit me first. Then what kind of fun we're going to have. And I know we're getting into the digital world and how we create it. And I just 
the Hulk 20 years ago, and not too long ago, uh, I experienced a tiger in Life of Pi. In my head, this is within reach. But I know it's with human face, uh, you're playing with fire. It's, it's pretty, you're, 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 you're in a gas room. Like, it's pretty scary, but at the same time, it's pretty exciting. So I signed on. The first time we talked is, I said, I want to do it, but I want to have a new approach, and I want to try a different media. Um, so I invited Jerry and, and the whole Skydance people into my uh, New York uh, editing room to see a reel of uh, buildings on halftime walk. I said, this is the media I want to do. I want to approach in a digital way with Junior. And then they fell for it. So that, that's how we started. I was quite surprised. <laughs> After really somebody like, here we go. Uh, I've got to give them a lot of credit and support they have for, for this project. You know, some shots take a year, and while we're shooting, with the turnover before they see anything, they're like, okay, we trust this guy. Um, you know, well, well I want to ask. Uh, you know, it ultimately, so much has been written and talked about already with like the technology and how it breaks ground and it breaks boundaries, which it absolutely does, and we'll get to that in a second, but you know, the script is the thing. So, so what was it like for you when you read this the first time that made you just go, I'm in? You know, I just, I loved the, 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 the philosophical idea that we all plant the seeds of our own destruction. You're like we are our own worst enemies. <laughs> like you know the, that we make choices and we we make uh, decisions in our lives that set things in motion that we can't blame other people for, and that the the battle with trying to overcome our karma. You know, and I just thought it was a really uh, clever and creative way to say that we are the architects of our ultimate um, rise or fall. And to be able to do that in this way, and it's a big part of why I love uh, science fiction, because you can put those things under really wild visual uh, landscapes. Well, Clive, you know, when, when you look at the way the movie was being made while it was being shot, you know, like when I think of uh, the, some of the movies you've done in the last, you know, 20 years, when I look at movies like Children of Man, which is like, you know, just such a great movie. And, Woo! <laughs> you know, but also something, you know, <laughs> breaking the ice. Uh, I love it. Bring it. Do it. Uh, no, no, it's great. Uh, but also like Shoot 'Em Up, which is very, uh, you know, visceral, action-heavy film. You know, what did you see as like the challenges with, with making this movie that were different from the other films that you've made? Um, I, I think it's like a, a brilliant coming together of something that's, you know, hugely, it's, it's full of action, it's a great premise, it's a, it feels like a huge movie, but it's also, you know, it's about characters and it's about drama and it's very intimate and personal. And I think that Mr. Ang Lee is the, ultimate director for a movie like this because he's on top of all the technology, he's on top of what huge drama is, but he's also incredibly artistic and specific and detailed. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was just hugely excited the minute I, I got sent the script, yeah. yeah when, when the stories like you were talking about, like yeah, just how, you know, Jerry, when you got jumped in and how the technology wasn't quite there and all the tests that you've been doing, I, I want to ask, like, what was the breakthrough moment? What was the aha, we got it moment when you said, we can do this? That's for you. <laughs> You're still waiting for that. <laughs> uh, you know, we, uh, when Aang first uh, came to me and we talked about how we were going to do this, we did look at what had been done in the past and where the technology was. Uh, there had been some pretty close attempts uh, in Rogue One and uh, uh, Blade Runner the year before, and we thought that things have matured and he, it was kind of very similar to what he, he done. I, I worked with him on Life of Pi and he came to me and said, uh, can we do for a human what we did for the tiger? So we looked and said, technology is close enough that if we put the same determination into it, we thought we felt confident that we could do that. And 
you know, honestly, uh, if something doesn't scare me a little bit, it's not really worth doing. So there, there was some fear involved, but we did feel confident that the, the technology was close enough that with a raw determination, with the incredible skill and talent of the people at Leto, that we could do this. I was just going to add that um, we've been toying around with digital humans a lot with, with stunt work, but uh, to really break this barrier, what we needed was a project that, that supported it. You know, the, the commitment not just to have a couple of shots where you want to have a guy doing something falling off a building, but, but truly have a digital human standing in front of a uh, mm -hmm. camera, acting and resonating with the audience and delivering the lines and, and serving the story. Um, and this mm -hmm. film was the perfect opportunity to actually be, be able to bring it all together. And I like every trigger I've ever pulled. There is not de-aging. Right? So it's not my face, and then they smoothed out my face to make it look younger. It's a 100% digital human, in the same way that the tiger in the life of Pi, uh, for, you, you know, they used a real tiger to understand the movement, but in, in the, the movie, when you're seeing the, the tiger, you're seeing 100% digital recreation of a tiger. This is not me, the age. It's a 100% digital interpretation of me. It's a digital character. It's the first digital human, right? So it's, it, it's actually a spectacular thing to be able to make people feel emotion in that way, capturing the youthful eyes. That's the thing for me that was so amazing, was the hardest part that me and Ang were talking about. It's like, you can't, you can't fake innocence, right? So it's like, you know, I was, I was doing an interview the other day and I was trying to explain it. It's like, as a young actor, it's easier to play older, but older, it's, it's difficult to impossible to play younger. Once you know some stuff, it's no. in your <laughs> eyes, right? <laughs> it's in your cells once you know some stuff. So to try to have eyes that unknow, like sex, like once you've had sex, you know, <laughs> you, you, just, you walk different. It's in your back, you know? Well, <laughs> You know, so their job in the creating of a digital human was to be able to sell that innocence and that and that youth and to be able to sell a digital digital human in that way. And I think you guys have done spectacular work. I want to say that uh, Will's being very humble in this one aspect because there, despite all that, there is no magic button that we can push to say, make him look young. He had, <laughs> he had to ingest that and be himself at 23. Yeah. And we can, we can put the the look and make sure he looked like his 23 year old self, but the performance and the innocence had to come from him. So that was a. But I, I want to ask, okay, so, so this, this type of technology to do that, okay, mm -hmm. but the, the trick here is that it has to be invisible. Right. Right? You can't look at it and go, that's a great special effect. Right, right, right. You have to go, that's Will Smith. Right, absolutely. Okay, so how, how did you make sure that you always made that element invisible? Uh, I have this whole plan of, uh, first we see him with sunglasses in bright sun, sunlight, but he seems to see the ghost. It was an action sequence. Very exciting, so hopefully you accept that existence. Then I have a shot of an intimate moment. You get into the world of being a real person. And then we move on. But then the trailer seems to give everything away. And, um, <laughs> I got me really, really nervous. Uh, I, I think uh, everything we talked about, actually, that was the easier part. The, the people call it technology. It's really an artist's endeavor. We, we work with everybody's imagination, collective self-consciousness. So that's, that's a real end, a challenge. Um, the, the science these guys did was mind-boggling. They showed them what age does there, what every was, what they can talk about it that, that way. Um, it is mind-boggling to study into the science of aging and our structure and how our emotion connect with every tissue in our body. Uh, it's just mind-boggling. But that's like, I will say 10% of the work. When everything is absolutely right, believable, it's not really believable because it's too correct. Just to mess it up, 
So we think that the, the movie he used to play was a different person in this media, in that situation. That was uh, about scratching your head and very expensive process to try to get it again with a huge, a huge data cable running. Uh, I, I think that just played on people's ability, as, as you said. Um, there's no law to it. It changes an angle, it changes some lighting, it changes the scene. And like the life, life of Pi, that tiger. And then I remember there's one day in the ninth month the post, like, we got it. From now on, we know that tiger. There's never such a moment here. It come and go, come and go, you know, it's just like, it's whimsical. <laughs> Jared, I want to ask. So, so here's a film. It's not. It's not a sequel. It's not a prequel. It's not a Star Wars movie. It's not a superhero movie. It's not a reboot. It's not a sequel of a reboot. You, you, you get where I'm going. It um, should have been on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a very, very, very big TV. Uh, but Jerry, like, how how rewarding was it to really nurture this film along these last, you know, more than 12 years or so? Well, it's always great when you find a piece of material in love with and you can bring it to an audience and hopefully they'll enjoy it the way you enjoyed it when you read it. And you have to understand that when they talk about digital Will, it's his performance. So it's 100% Will's performance on a digital full body. It's not just they replace the head, it's everything. So he wore a, a head thing and it's, so he played two characters in this movie. He did first the Henry part of it, and then he turned around and did the will, the junior part of it. So it was it was grueling for him to do play two parts every single day that that character, two characters were on screen together. So you have to understand the accomplishment that not only wedded it and Aang did, but his performance is outstanding for two parts. So difficult, draining. <laughs> but Will, you know what? I want to ask you about this. You know, you are you are playing yourself. Uh, how do you, you know, when you're watching, you see how junior, there's, there's definitely a, a drive and ambition and energy, you know, there's that word again, energy, but there's also a, a naivete about it, you know, because he's just not, he's not, you know, world weary like, like, like Henry is. So, how did you make sure that you separated your performance as Henry from your performance as Jane? Well, what, what was really uh, great that Hank did is uh, before we even met, he had gone through all of my uh, filmography and he grabbed things that, uh, you know, he grabbed uh, Fresh Prince, he grabbed uh, Six Degrees Separation, it was uh, Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black. And, he, you know, he grabbed the scenes and, you know, he was sort of walking me through moments and, uh, you know, he, he would look and he'd say, uh, I love very much what you have done in this moment here at Six Degrees of Separation. Uh, in Bad Boys, this one was good, but don't ever do this at all. <laughs> so we, we sort of created uh, uh, a language of my, my the old characters and the and the moments of what he was trying to capture. There was there was um, it's funny. There's a thing be, before you learn how to act. There's a there's a powerful thing that you have from not knowing, and it's really difficult to re recapture the, that that not knowing. And we we found these moments. We found these really honest. Uh, moments in, in some of the some of the, the my early work, um, uh, but I would say of of all the things that was the the, the most difficult part. It, it almost felt like learning how to do some bad acting, like go back to bad acting, right? Because there's an honesty before you actually learn where the light is and you learn how to stand and you you learn what makes people clap for movie stars in the you know in the theater and it's like letting letting go of all of that stuff was 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 uh, really difficult. You know Clive the scene uh, you know where we have we have Henry and we have Junior in the same scene this you know it's a very human scene everyone is interacting with each other. Uh, what was take us through what this like what what it was like to make a scene like that when you have well, and, but you also have Junior in the scene, but maybe Will wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just make up something good. 
<laughs> Most of my stuff was with young women, so you know, we did, uh, and it's true, like, you, you can talk about all the technology and how amazing it is, but unless you've got the acting and the drama and the script, and people are uh, feeling things, I don't know how much that counts for, really. And, uh, but, uh, you know, so a lot of the time I was acting with Will with this huge head ring on, which was, you know, for all the stuff they're going to do later. But I have to say, that the truth of the matter is, because he's so focused and so, you know, such a good actor, all of that disappears very quickly. And I don't even see it, I have to avoid it. <laughs> 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 But there was a thing with cameras on, so every time we had a scene together, I had this long thing and it had cameras on, so we'd be talking and we'd be like, you know, how could you do this to me? <laughs> but, but honestly, all of that soon disappears, and you end up, it's like you, you're acting a scene like you act any scene, like you, you're focusing on what's important and, and you act as you would in, in any other movie, there's just this huge operation going on around it. You know, one of the, the high points of the film, action-wise, is the bike chase. And there's a there's this part of the film where, where you're following uh, Henry, you know, like, it's all sort of one take. So again, this goes back to, like, the biggest challenge of the film, to look invisible. Like, you're not, it's not, you're not drawing attention to, like, the junior aspect of it. But it's still a great, great scene. So what were the challenges to, to really bring that scene to full fruition because it is such a visceral, edge of your seat moment. I think what was really cool is that, uh, especially with this with this format, it shows so much detail. And because of that, we went to great lengths to film as much as we possibly could. There was a, this, this camera rig, it's this 80 pound uh, uh, combination of the film made of stereo, and it's put on the back of this e-bike. So the, the guy who's driving the camera is as skilled, if not more, than the stunt guys that are driving behind it, tearing through traffic, popping up on walls. But we filmed that for real. Uh, we had stunt, stunt riders, and then we went back and we'd replace uh, Junior's torso to put, uh, put Junior on there. But we tried to do, you know, only use CGI where we had to. But we, there were some fun things as well, because you are in the moment. Ang you know, experimented with what is it like if you are on that bike uh, and you're experiencing it. That, that, those are things you haven't seen before. Um, it, was, uh, it was a really uh, a great new way to do to do the action, and you do all the, you know all these different variations, and then they then the, the the stuntmen can do full takes, and we can do full takes, and then they'll be able to make the most visceral version of it when they when they get all of those assets in, into play. So in terms of action, I'm really uh, excited about the, the the use of this technology in the future. Well, let's take questions from the audience. Fred, you're first. You. Oh yeah, here comes the mic. <laughs> Hi, Will. Well, now I want to know if uh, the episode of Fresh Prince where Will's father comes to visit was one of Ang Lee's references for <laughs> yeah, you. No, no, he, he didn't pull that one. He, he, uh, with with, with the, the Fresh Prince, uh, I think Ang, uh, he found it more interesting to show me what not to do. Uh, <laughs> well, my question was, uh, crafted your movie career very carefully with science fiction movies that were inspired by movies that were the biggest hits at the, block, at the box office at the time. While in this climate today, as Scott was describing with uh, franchises and reboots and everything, is a movie like Gemini Man, The Underdog? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, definitely uh, in, this new, in this new world, uh, it's a whole lot uh, safer to 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 uh, from a, a financial standpoint to, to make a part three of something uh, than it is to do something brand new from the ground up. But this that you know that's what uh, we were all excited about with this and what Ann kept saying and, and why to push the envelope to give give people a new reason uh, to to go to movie theaters to see something that you you can't see at home. Um, uh, in terms of, I think, for the first part of the question, for me, uh, it was Star Wars was the, the, the movie when I was growing up. They absolutely, I, I, was, I was stunned sitting at, after Star Wars ended. I couldn't believe that they could make me feel like that with, with a story and with, with the, these characters. And um, I think career-wise, the, the, the things I've been chasing are uh, Star Wars and Thriller uh, are the, the, the two pieces of entertainment that uh, um, uh, I've 
always been hoping to make something that matches for others how I felt when, when I experienced those. Uh, got a question right over here? Yes. Hey, yeah, it's Richard King. Good to see you again. How you doing, sir? Anyway, this is for Mr. Lee and Mr. Burkhardt. For years, there's been controversy about digital actors replacing real actors. I know you guys are familiar with that. So this film basically proves that it can be done. So how do you think the reaction is going to be with people like the union and folks like that that might feel a little threatened by this character? Be, be careful with this question. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, uh, I'm as cynical as this guy sitting over there. We want to be recognized, but uh, at the end of the day, the biggest praise we can have is nobody think about that and asking that. They just watch the, the movie uh, um, and watch the story of Junior uh, without thinking about it. But uh, that's very difficult to do. Uh, to the first part of the question, the, the scare, uh, I think for a long time we don't really have to. The digital one is a lot more expensive than this guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can have it a lot. <laughs> so hard, so risky, and so expensive. <laughs> right? 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 Yeah, this guy's easy. Yeah. It's easy. You're right. yeah. <laughs> so that will for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The one thing I'd add there, though, is that <clears throat> Even though there's a 23-year-old Will Smith on the frame, the performance was not created at the computer, right? That's, that's the point of distinction that a lot of people just don't remember, is that every single take, even all those stunt falls that we did, where we replaced the stunt uh, Will with the stunt performance, sorry, vice versa, um, we had Will acted out in the mocap stage. So the character, the performance comes from the actor. We, we, the digital creature, the digital character, the digital human does not replace the actor in that regard. Yeah, we, we did this one thing that using a stuntman to play him. We always pretend something happened. Uh, we use substitutes to make believe, and this is a, like a new way to do it. Uh, yeah, but we we did this for a reason because we had old Will Smith in the same frame with young Will Smith. So there's really no alternative. It's it's still forever going to be better to use a real actor when you can. This just allows you to do tell stories and do different things that wouldn't be possible otherwise. There's a question right up here in the front, if you have uh, the microphone. Uh, I have one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We'll come okay. back to this. Okay. Just snatched it out of the head. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, hey, yeah, thanks for your <laughs> <you. laughs> Learn how to share. Learn how to share. <laughs> About we, we find out the, the back history of both the young and the older Will. Can you talk about how you saw both of the way they were raised, making them the men they became? So that was uh, one, one of the, the major discussions that we, we were having in terms of nature versus nurture. And, you know, how if, if you're genetically identical, um, how, how much does your life experience affect the things that you say and do and feel? Um, so we were trying to draw as you know, big a difference as, as possible as we could between the characters and Henry, you know, you, you grew up in, in you know, br brutal household, he had a, a tougher upbringing where uh, Junior had the perfect upbringing with Clive's character and uh, in, in, in Clive's character's uh, pursuit of the perfect human, he was trying to lay out the perfect experience for a young Junior. So it was all of the right schools and he was only allowed to read the right books and he was only allowed to um, experience the, the best of what the nurturing uh, aspects of a home should be. So, uh, in in you know drawing those distinctions, it was it's still interesting that it still came down to uh, you know two men who had taken these gifts that they had and still turned them into things that were going to, uh, like I know what the line was, but that were still going to create nightmares and that were going to. Uh, you know, create uh, a, a horrible end uh, to to this experience. So I don't, I don't know if that answers the question. Pretty close. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Hi, uh, Dennis from BOTV Hong Kong. Um, first of all, congratulations. Great movie. I have a question for Anne and Will. So you guys mentioned that um, both of you like watched the work of Will years ago together. So how was the experience like? Was it like fun or somehow like um, embarrassing maybe? And also for Will, what is your favorite work of Anne like um, before? Have you ever uh, imagined yourself being like fighting like a pushing uh, tiger or the tiger in the of pie maybe? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we watched all of uh, the original work and uh, of my original work, and was that fun? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's no fun at all with Ang Lee up on the edge of his chair watching everything you've ever done, every moment, and breaking it down and describing. Yeah, so that I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that was fun. Uh, <laughs> But it was, uh, in, in terms of being in a, in a, in a, a film school environment, it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was uh, I, I grew as, a, as an actor and uh, as a human for the, the, the time that I was able to, to uh, spend with such an incredible artist as Angley. How was that film school environment for you, Clyde? Working with Will, but especially with Angley. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a really, really great experience. I mean, as I said before, you know, it's a, it, we've talked a lot about the technology and the, you know, the huge sort of advancements that are being made, being made in film. But ultimately, this man is an artist, and we'll talk about specific lines and details of character because, you know, as I said before, all of it counts for nothing if you're not invested in the drama of something. And so it feels like, you know, it's it's the He's the perfect man to do a film like this where, you know, and, and also we haven't really talked about the whole subject of, um, of cloning. I, 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 I read an article like four weeks ago in the New York Times about somebody cloning a cat that is actually done and that this whole thing about cloning pets is becoming an ethical issue. And, you know, this, this film also brings up, we're not that far away from what the film is discussing with you, and it's it's coming fast, and there are going to be huge ethical decisions and discussions that people are going to have to have. We need more people. <laughs> the learning, the learning is bilateral, I have to say. It flows both ways, in every which way. At some point, you just feel this camaraderie, it's like you're in a trench together. Sure. And at some point, you feel like only we understand each other, is it us against the whole world? They don't know who they are. That's actually a very selfishly wonderful feeling. It would, you know, I cherish every moment I work with actors or crews or you know, that's that school is uh, make me feel like I want to be a forever film student. You know, to learn to do those things. That that's the, the big reward in making those movies. You got the mic. <laughs> Not taking the mic. Right. <laughs> so this I love the So how do you think? So, uh, how do you think audiences, especially older audiences, uh, will they embrace a new cinematic experience? <laughs> the filmmakers, and Well, I think that the, the, the 3D is so subtle. It is, again, it feels like you're actually in the room with the actors. It gives dimension to their performances. It's not like the old 3D where you get eye strain. And that's all gone now. Uh, there's no headaches anymore. It's the way they've done it with, um, Anne can explain it, or Bill can explain it better than I can, but it's very comfortable to watch, and I hope the audience gets to experience it in 3D. Hi. Um, Clive, you brought up cloning, and my question is, your character at some point talks about the issue of cloning in a film where you say, um, when you clone someone or when you recreate someone, you have the opportunity to not grieve any longer, to not lose the person that you love and have those experiences in life. And I just wanted to know from anyone who wants to answer, how do you think that you would feel if that became a possibility, if that became a reality, where if, not, if we're not cloning animals, we're now cloning human beings, and that becomes a reality where you no longer have to experience grief or loss? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. I think we all have the, the, the human 
uh, quest to overcome our pain. Right, so we're, we're all trying to figure out how to eliminate suffering uh, from our lives. And um, there, there was an interesting phrase I, I heard uh, the other day called, uh, it, it was, they said poisoned honey, that we reach for poisoned honey a lot in order to overcome our pain and suffering. And I, I you know, when I think about cloning, and we talked about it a lot on this movie, and you know, it's one of those scientific reaches that I think that um, the we've already gone down the road. That, so there's, I'm sure there's absolutely things that have happened in cloning that we don't we don't know about yet that we're going to find out. But my my opinion is that cloning will uh, ultimately uh, pan out to to be poison honey. Uh, it will be a reach that will uh, potentially come back and, and uh, bite humanity um, in a way that, that uh, we're, we're probably not considering fully. We've got time for two more questions, so hang on. You got the first. <laughs> Jim Alexander here with Real Talker. Uh, Will, a question for you. You've been synonymous with the sci fi and action genre for years, and you've been kicking ass for decades, but. Has it come to a point where you start thinking about the next stage in your career with roles? You're not going to be able to jump off buildings forever, you know? And, and, but have you thought about what would you like to do next with sort of the genre of films? And I've seen kind of Clyde transition slowly into that space uh, himself, but have you thought about uh, what you would like next for you to be, what sort of genres and roles to take? Actually, you can jump off buildings forever. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. You'd be jumping off buildings into my hundreds. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I, I think um, uh, more than just a, a, a transition in roles. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I turned 51 uh, last week, and I'm, I'm really. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm I'm experiencing a, a, you know, a transition in, in my life uh, more more than ever. I'm 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 seeing my role. Um, in the in the world as a as a uh, a role of service, you know, and in my in my younger days, um, uh, it was it was ambition, you know. I wanted I wanted to win. I wanted to put points on the board. Um, and now I'm kind of growing into the position in my life where I'm kind of just uh, the, the the main question that I ask myself before I do anything is how is this of service to the, the human family. Um, so with, with that prism, I'll, I'll be uh, making more and more uh, decisions in, in my life. Um, I, I love science fiction, I love uh, filmmaking, even wanting to do this here at YouTube, you know, is, is a, a bit of an, an, an outreach for me to a, a new generation of the next generation of artists and, and filmmakers. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to figure out how everything that, that, that I do is uh, conscious and thought out and of uh, some justifiable service to the human family. Uh, I just got, before we get to the last question over here, I just want to ask, will Philly represent? Philly represent? Oh, Philly in the middle! No, absolutely. So, what was the what was the point where you said we got to make Henry a, a Philly guy? I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, for me, that, 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 wait, that was, was that, in, we didn't change that, did we? No, that was, it, it, yeah, it, yeah, Henry was always from Philly, yeah, that wasn't, yeah, you know, when I read it, I was like, that's Jerry trying to get me to say yes to the <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, it was already it was already in there. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I have the last question right here. It's so glad. Um, what are you talking about actors about playing a villain? Um, this guy is so delicious and sinister at the same time playing Doctor Evil. I wanted to know how how it felt to take that on. What is it you could have possibly liked? Also, I don't know if you knew Will before, but now you do. Could you please spare the beans of Will Smith for working with him? Don't you dare spare the beans of This is the first, and you have to tell the truth. Um, 
it's funny because when you talk about like you know when people say about playing bad guys, I, I've never ever approached any character, anything I've ever done as a bad guy or a good guy, or a, you you just take on the part and you know you know you know often the most interesting thing is to play flawed characters and. I just never approach it going, well, how do I play a bad guy? I look at the guy and look at what he does and think, okay, what's the way in here? Out? What's the best way of expressing it? So I don't sort of uh, ever sort of take on a path thinking, okay, so I'm playing a bad guy, how do I do that? Um, in terms of working with this man, at the <laughs> risk of embarrassing him, he is like the, the best version of major movie star you could ever come across in terms of, in terms of his, his acting skills, in terms of his discipline, his focus, his, you know, we, we did those scenes, we walk onto the set and it's incredibly focused and on point and it was just uh, an absolute pleasure. He's a hugely impressive guy and actor. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you. I thought I was going to ask in terms of playing a bad guy, what, what was, was really interesting along with what Clive was saying is, you know, the perception that, and I've learned something about this, I've never, I've never played a character, you know, that's really a, a, a bad guy in that sense, but what was great about Clive's perspective is that there's no such thing as a, a bad guy. He was like, the, the bad guy's the good guy in his story, right? <laughs> in, the, in the bad guy's mind, you're the bad guy. Innocence and that and that youth and to be able to sell a digital digital human in that way and I think you guys have done spectacular work. I want to say that uh, Will's being very humble in this one aspect because there, despite all that, there is no magic button that we could push to say make him look young. He had <laughs> he had to ingest that and be himself at 23. Yeah. We could we could put the the look and make sure he looked like his 23 year old self, but the performance and the innocence had to come from him. So that was a. But I, I want to ask, okay, so so that's the set type technology to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. But the, the trick here is that it has to be invisible. Right. Right? You can't look at it and go, that's a great special effect. Right, right, right. You have to go, that's Will Smith. Right. Definitely. Okay. So how, how did you make sure that you always made that element invisible? Uh, I have this whole plane of, uh, first we see him with sunglasses and bright sun, sunlight, but he seems to see the ghost. It was an action sequence. Very exciting, so hopefully you accept that existence. Then I have a shot of an intimate moment. You get into the world being a real person. And then we move on. But then the trailer seems to give everything away. In <laughs> I got me really, really nervous. Uh, I, I think uh, everything we talked about, actually, that was the easier part. The, the, the people call it technology. It's really an artistic endeavor. We, we work with everybody's imagination, collective self-consciousness. So that's, that's a real enemy, a challenge. Uh, the, the science these guys did was mind-boggling. They showed me what age does the what every most what they can talk about uh, that way. Um, it is mind-boggling to study into the science of aging and our structure and how our emotion connect with every tissue in our body. Uh, it's just mind-boggling. But that's like I would say ten percent of the work. When everything is absolutely right, believable, it's not really believable because it's too correct, just to mess it up. So we think that's the, the movie he used to play, but it's a different person in this media, in that situation. That was uh, a lot of scratching head and very expensive process to try to get it again with a huge, a huge data keep running. Uh, I, I think that just played on people's blue, as, as you said. That there's no such thing as a, a bad guy. He was like, the, the bad guy's the good guy in his story, right? So, <laughs> in, the, in the bad guy's mind, you're the bad guy, right? So that idea, well, it was a good click for me in, the, in, that, in that comprehension, and you know, Clive really pushing to get clear on the point. What the, everybody, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you have a point, you know? Nobody wakes up and says, I want to be a bad guy today, <laughs> right? You wake up and anything you do, however, we look at it and we like, that's a bad guy, 
right? But in the person's mind, they're they're doing good, they're doing right. Nobody wants to do bad, and that was a really interesting thing to watch as Clive worked through the character and found how the character was 100% right in his own mind. Okay, last question right here. Uh, well, this is for you. Uh, you said you have been doing, uh, you have been playing Henry, going back and playing Julia. How did you keep at it doing this every day, the same thing, repeating it same? And the second question is, do you have any advice to your 23 yourself? So, oh, that's interesting. So, what, what, uh, first question, what Aang uh, did that was really great is um, what, what makes someone, when you say, oh man, uh, he or she's really an, an, an actor's director, is when they understand how to create circumstances for you to achieve the psychological and emotional space that, that they're looking for. So, Aang was really good about separating Henry from Junior in the scheduling, right? That I would get, you know, you get lathered up into Henry, and if the shift shift is too abrupt, it, 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 it's hard to get your your mind around it. Um, but so he did a really great job of separating the, the time from Henry and Junior so I could spend more time in one mindset or the other. Um, and in terms of advice to my younger self, uh, that, that question came up a lot. And my, my younger self was uh, wildly and in, insanely aggressive. You know, at 23, year old, 23 years old, I was, I was uh, naive, and uh, uh, ambitious and aggressive. And there's a power to naivete. There's a, there's, a, there's a power that I'm actually trying to get back in my life right now. So I, I would be asking my 23 year old self for advice more than trying to, because he made some good ass decisions. I, was like, I wouldn't have done it that way, you know, but he really, he made some, he made some, good calls, you know? So for me, just in the last couple of years, I've been feeling trapped by the the success that I've had and that the decisions and choices I've been able to make have been smaller trying to protect Will Smith. You know, so on my 50th birthday, you know, I was like, F it. And I just jumped out of a helicopter <laughs> over the Grand Canyon trying to get back to that youthful, uh, fearless, space, so I, I would be interviewing him more than trying to give him advice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gemini, it opens October 11th. October 11th. So yeah, everybody. Thank you so much. Hola y no olvides suscribirte a mi canal, hacerles like, compartirlos y oprimir esa campanita para ser los primeros en recibir mis videos. Hi and don't forget to subscribe, share my videos and like them. And don't forget to hit the bell so you can be the first ones to get my videos.
don't forget to subscribe, share my videos and like them. And don't forget to hit the bell so you can be the first ones to get my videos.